Hey Tubers, how's it going? Mr. Green here and uh, working on a new project. Um, this old house uh, is just constantly needing work and uh, what, I've, what I'm working on now is uh, countertops in my place and right now since we've lived here we've been living with just all mismatched countertops so we have like an old butcher block that's over the dishwasher and then old laminate because when we bought this house they used to have the washer and dryer in the, the actual kitchen which obviously wasn't going to work for us um, so what we we've been just dealing with it I added a whole cabinet down there and just some spare laminate that I had so but uh, to keep with the feel of this house and anybody that's followed any of my other videos on uh, on these countertops or on these uh, on this old house um, knows that I like to do things in wood to try to keep the old look of this house so what I'm gonna do is build <clears throat> all of my countertops out of 1 by 12 pine and uh, I'm gonna be staining it um, and I will be varnishing it and I'll show you that later on in the video so um, hi Lila so I uh, We'll show you on the next one how I did do this. This is all done with a biscuit joiner. And uh, this is the big part of the countertop, but we do have a two foot section that needs to be done. And uh, I'll show you how I'm doing that. Uh, obviously, I don't have enough clamps. So what I've done is I'm clamping it along and then screwing it from underneath to keep everything tight. I, uh, I am in desperate need of more clamps, but that's beside the point. Um, so. Normally you would have like clamps all the way along down here and that would make it a thousand times easier but uh, like I said I don't so um, then I'm going to stain them and uh, and varnish and then they're going to go in so I will uh, I'll go get the next set of countertops and uh, we'll, I'll show you how to use the biscuit joiner and how to join boards together so we'll be back here in a minute. Okay guys. This is uh, this is what I'm talking about. This is one by one by twelve pine. Uh, it's good one side, rough on the other side, so considered almost like a barn board. And uh, the cost here, uh, my uh, cost was about thirteen dollars a board. So for very little money, this everything, the stain, the verithane, uh, the wood, and everything all came up to about sixty dollars so this is a very cheap way of making countertops um, and they're gonna look great when they're done now keep in mind this is pine and same as if you're using spruce or or any other softwood you do not want to cut directly on this countertop when it's done it will have like a hard finish still but uh, you do not want to cut on it because it is softwood so you want to make sure you always cut on a cutting board, but you should do that on any counter. So, but uh, anyway, so what I do with the biscuit joiner is let me show you here. This is a, a biscuit, and uh, this is a biscuit joiner, and it's got a little saw that comes out the front here that cuts into the side of your board and uh, I'll show you the process here so what you want to do is take your two boards line everything up nice and straight and the way you want to do is put a line across the seam right across the seam so I'm going to span this wide I'm going to split it up into four uh, biscuits so one there one here one here and one so now when you go to line these back up, they'll be easy to line up. And you want to stay in at least two inches in from the end uh, because when you put your biscuit in, you don't want it sticking out the end of your board. So now what you do is move one of these boards out of the way for a second. Take your biscuit joiner. Make sure you guys are in frame here. Uh, and 
you want to take right on the front of it here you line up this little line right onto the little line that you got here keeping everything flat you line it all up and then start it and push in and that's it Okay, so now when I take the two boards, and you may notice that there's some knots and stuff in the countertop, but uh, I'm going for character because this is a very, very old house. So um, what you want to do now is take uh, your biscuits, So now you take your biscuit. need four of them and these are number 20 there's uh this one can do three different sizes of biscuits so it just changes the depth of them and how strong they are and how much bigger they are so um so now what you want to do is tip up your board like so get a glue bottle that has like a contractor's like a carp pro carpenter glue like this and the nozzles on them go down to a little point which fits perfect inside these little biscuit joiners or in these uh, biscuit slots. So what you want to do is put it inside each biscuit slot just like so and then you want to put it all around the wood here Just like that and then you want to make sure that because right now yeah you could put it together but there's going to be areas that aren't touching you know glue on glue so what you want to do is just take your finger and smear it evenly along that whole seam and that will uh, ensure that you get a good bond um, and that's what you want that's where it's going to give you your strength when every part of the wood that's touching each other is a uh, hundred percent bond now keep in mind once again this is a place where you want to have lots of clamps which once again I don't have any so you can do it without it um, and you got to make sure that uh, you know it's squished really tight together and you know you may have to use a little bit more wood filler later on but that's not really such a big deal so you just take the biscuit and you slide it into the slot and glue sh usually squirts out just like so so put them on all four just like that like that and then tip up the other board and you're going to want to just fill the slots you don't have to fill everything now what I normally do will I'll fill the slots with glue and then just to add in some extra glue because you can never have enough just put one bead down the center on this side you don't have to worry about smearing it because it's going to squish and it's already been coated well on the other side so now let me just make sure you're there you are okay so now we'll line the two up and now we're going to make sure that we get these lines lined back up again and once you get all the biscuits in there And it's just a matter of pushing it together just like that now like I said before it would be better if I had clamps to clamp everything tight but I don't so what I'm gonna do here is just uh, let it set up like that and then it will get sanded and uh, and you won't even know that seam was there so now the glue squirting out a bit here that's what you want 
So that's how easy it is to use a biscuit joiner. It is very simple um, and it helps you line up everything nice and perfect and uh, that really does help later on. So this is just a small countertop between my fridge and my stove. So there's no edges on it that get done on this side. It's just going to get sanded and smoothed out. Uh, and then I still have uh, an inch and a half piece that will go along the front end of the countertop. I'm going to take my router and route that edge and uh, and then we'll glue and brad nail that on and uh, and then we'll get to filling all the cracks and uh, the finishing of it so we'll be back here shortly okay so all I'm doing is uh, I went and I cut a uh, inch and a half uh, solid pine and I'm going to glue it and brad nail it to the front of the countertop um, this one only gets one on the front. The bottom one underneath here gets one along the front and around the one side to really dress it up. So uh, I'm going to get these on there and then uh, after I will go around and route the edges because trying to do it now, it, this is way too, like I, I only have a, a freehand router. I don't have a router table or it would be easier to do it with router tables. So this is the way I'm going to do it. So. I'm just going to put a generous amount of glue again along this top seam. Now remember the material thickness is only three quarters so I don't need to coat the whole back of this thing. You do want to make sure that you get right up to the edge and everything is covered. Wipe off that excess glue there and then we'll start brad nailing this on here. And then just kind of work your way along so you can keep the seam nice and tight. And you can go a little bit proud on uh, with your tr outside trim here. So when you do sand it down, it gives it, you're not trying to sand up, but you can sand down a little bit. Uh, that'll make more sense later on. And now keep in mind, you'll just, I'll go around after and I will uh, just fill all these nail holes with, uh, with the wood filler and you won't even know that they were ever there. So I'm just going to clean up a little bit of excess glue so it saves a little bit of sanding. And uh, and there you go. That's uh, how I'm doing the trim on the front. Very simple. Uh, but it's going to look great once it's uh, got a rudder edge on it. So um, yeah, so next thing is to do the other countertop. I won't show you that just because it's the exact same process as this. And then what I'm using is a natural wood filler and this is great uh, for like this color of pine or spruce. So you'll fill the holes with this and then you'll I'll sand over everything, make sure everything is nice and smooth and you won't see any of the, the cracks or anything when I, uh, when I fill it with this. So that's going to be uh, one of the things coming up. And uh, yeah, so we'll talk to everybody shortly. Okay, so now we're going to route out this part of the table. I'm going to start down at this end and uh, work my way around. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so now what we're doing is I'm going to, uh, I've got all the trim done, it's all sanded, and uh, it's all uh, 
dust it off. So now what I'm using is a red mahogany uh, made by Midwax. Uh, it's been a great product. I've used it for years. And I use a rag to put it on and then another rag to wipe it off after. So <clears throat> one thing that's good to do is put on some uh, rubber gloves. Because stain will stain your fingers as well. And it is very hard to get out. As you can see, I'm doing this in my dining room because it's raining outside and uh, pretty miserable. So, I'm going to probably time lapse this part so you don't have to watch every last little part of this, but here we go. Okay, well there it is all stained. It uh, needs to dry for a while before I start putting any kind of clear coat on it. But uh, this is the clear coat that I'm putting on. It's uh, a little more than their regular uh, Minwax, but it's uh, water-based. And I was talking to the lady in the store and she said that this stuff has a harder, more durable uh, uh, um, finish than uh, than the other one, so um, it's supposed to be easy to work with, and uh, we'll probably be putting I don't know three or four coats on uh, as much as we need to make sure we got good coverage, and we'll be putting them on with uh, foam brushes. So that's going to be the next step, and then it will be getting them installed. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, catch back to you then. Okay guys, well, I've got it all uh, verithaned. Well, it's not completely done yet. There's uh, five coats so far on this. And as you can see, you can see the reflection of the window in there. It's really, really shiny. Um, I did get the clear coat so that it is a nice, clear, really nice shine to it. So I'll show you how I apply the polyacrylic. And... Uh, and on my last coat here and the key thing is is to keep your brush strokes only going in one direction so I'll show you what I mean here and then uh, and then we'll come back again once I've got them installed and you can see them installed okay so what you want to do is between every coat is sand with uh, a 220 grit and uh, that will knock off any of the little fibers that stick up in the wood and stuff like that if you don't do that you will not get a nice finish you have to sand between coats and you don't have to sand all crazy what I do is normally pull from one side just to knock that stuff off and you will get a really nice coat this way and you won't have any imperfections in it And then just wipe it off. Make sure you sand the edges and everything.
Okay. So what you want to use is, <clears throat> you can use a brush, but I find a, a foam brush works well. And I stirred this an hour and a half ago, so if I just give it a little swirl there, it should be just fine. Alright, so what you want to do is start on one edge and pull it across to the other. Just work your way down along. Not putting it on too heavy, just as long as you got a nice even coat. And what I do is I rotate the brush every time I come back. The round handle so it spins quite easily in your hand. So I come across, flip. Come across, pull, flip, and always going in one direction. Do not, I mean you will get a bad coat if you start painting this like it's paint. It's not paint and you want to make sure that it goes on evenly. So you make sure you got good lighting, which is key. I've got this giant chandelier above me so I can really see how it's going on. and you just keep pulling it along from one side to the other. Keep flipping your brush each rotation. So, I'm gonna do my edge here. It takes two hours between coats, so and now you want to wait 24 hours if you use an oil-based paint or oil-based stain underneath uh, underneath this uh, polycrystallite and what you want to, if it's a water-based stain you do not need to wait it says four hours so 24 hours for an oil-based stain because this is water-based over oil um, and uh, and then you're set to go you can go every two hours after that Depending on temperature, make sure it's warm and that it's not super humid. If it's really humid, it's going to take longer to dry, obviously. But it is ultra fast drying, so it, it, it does dry extremely fast. So now it'll go on like a creamy color, like a milky color, and you'll be all worried like, oh, this doesn't look good. As soon as it starts to dry, it'll dry completely clear. So I'm not going to show you doing the other countertop because you just watched me do that one. But uh, we'll be back here shortly, and we're going to take a look at them installed okay everyone well it's the next day and uh, I've now got the countertops installed um, the one part I didn't show you which I forgot to record and I apologize for that is the the back plate here um, I cut that stained it and then it's uh, glued and brad nailed onto the back so not very difficult with that so um, now as you can see I've got uh, six coats on this countertop and probably every few months for the next little while I'll be adding another coat just to uh, help the longevity of it and uh, give it a, a harder enamel on the top but it is pretty hard on the top we will never be cutting on directly on the countertops um, now I just built that cabinet to add into our kitchen because that's where there was uh, a washing machine before so I still gotta get doors for that but uh, yeah we got the sink given to us um, it's fiberglass with a nice uh, mowing uh, tap here so and uh, the other little countertop is over here and this is like our little coffee area and stuff like that so but uh, if you have any questions on anything, uh, feel free to, uh, to leave a comment down in the comment section. And uh, yeah, don't be afraid to take on projects like this uh, for yourself. You know, you can save yourself. I got appraised to get uh, laminate countertops. It was $400 to do this kitchen. And I just built all of these for $50. So, I mean, put your mind to it. You can accomplish anything. And... You know, I'm taking this house one step at a time. I took on a massive project with this house, but I enjoy every minute of it. And I've got my hands on every part of this house. So, um, 
yeah, so thanks for checking out this video, and uh, please remember to subscribe, and as always, if you could click that thumbs up button, it would be greatly appreciated. Have a great day.